The underlying network being deployed to interconnect LAN Classic and VXLAN EVPN multi-site. The next step is to create different overlay networks and VRF and attach them to the selected switches and interfaces. Let's look first at the day in the life for the deployment of the overlay networks and the VRF step by step, high level. The configuration of overlay networks and VRF can be pushed uh, either from the NDFC user interface or from the NDFC RESTful APIs. You will cover the RESTful API approach to automate the deployment of uh, overlay networks in the next sections. Regarding the deployment of the network, the first action from the network page is to select the fabric where you want to create or operate the network. Create the network and VRF with the overlay parameters, then attach the network to the concerned switches and interfaces. You can always preview the configuration of the network pushed by NDFC to each device if you wish, and you deploy. It uh, generally takes uh, several seconds based on the number of switches and interfaces to which you need to attach the networks. After the networks have been deployed, you can preview the historical uh, deployment per network and per switches. The resource manager continuously tracks for VN IDs and VLAN IDs, so NDFC is always aware of what has been consumed, even when you use your own VLAN ID. NDFC centralized tracking of all deployment, including the overlay networks in the fabric builder. To create a network, the scope must be either a standalone fabric, meaning it's uh, not member of any uh, multi-site domain, or a multi-site domain if the fabric belongs to the multi-site domain. Now let's go into the workflow. Select the topology overview of your fabric. You need to select uh, the multi-site domain scope if the overlay network concerns multiple sites. Select uh, the network tab and uh, from the action drop-down menu, create a network. Add a new network, start with the layer 2 VNI. NDFC provides you the layer 2 VNI that it will consume from its pool configured under the fabric settings. If you prefer, you can use your own VN ID. It's up to you, but recommendation is to leave NDFC to consume the predefined resources automatically. You choose if you want uh, layer 2 only or a layer 2 network with its uh, default gateway in a particular tenant, the VRF. You can give a name for that network or leave the name that comes automatically with NDFC. If you select layer 2 with layer 3, then you need to enter the VRF. Either you create a new one or you reuse an existing VRF. If you need to create a new VRF, at this stage, you can leave NDFC to provide the next layer 3 VNI and VLAN ID from its pool. Give a name for the VRF or you can use uh, the one given by NDFC. If you are an expert, you can always go to the Advanced tab. And that's it. Your VRF has been created. You can return to the setting of the network. For the VLAN ID, either you enter your VLAN ID of choice or you leave blank and NDFC will fill up the identifier from its pool of uh, VLAN IDs. Enter the default gateway for the VLAN. That is your layer 3 Anycast gateway that will be deployed to all leaf nodes of interest. Optionally, you can also open the advanced tab uh, if you will. And that's it. Your network and VRF have been uh, created. Now, notice that uh, some parameters of the network can be modified afterwards if needed. OK, let's look at the overlay networks and uh, VRF attachment. Go to the detail view of the concerned fabric. And from there, open the network tab. Double click on the network you wish to attach to the switches and interfaces. Open the network attachment tab and select all the switches you wish to attach the network. Edit the overlay network. You need to enable attach if not already enabled. And then select the interfaces. Then go to the next switch and uh, interfaces. Now you can save and repeat the same actions as many times as you have networks to be deployed. Select uh, the overlay networks and then deploy.
and you can preview the configuration if you wish at any time. Okay, so just a reminder for the underlay network infrastructure. You have built a LAN classic, which is attached to a pair of VPC leaf nodes from the VXLAN EVPN Fabric 1. There is a second VXLAN EVPN Fabric 2 interconnected with Fabric 1 using VXLAN EVPN multi-site across a layer 3 network. The goal of this demo is to create two networks, web in blue here and app in yellow, both routed networks belonging to a VRF tenant 1 and attach them to different switches and interfaces across the three data centers, including the classical LAN. Return to the NDFC topology view, enter the MSD scope, open the detail view. There is no VRF, no overlay networks yet created. From the network tab, call the action drop menu and create a network. You can give a name here, web tenant one. You can specify if this is a layer two only network, meaning non-routable. The network you want to create must belong to a VRF tenant one that you need to create. Give a name for your VRF tenant one. That's all you need to do to create a new VRF. Return to the network web creation. You can leave NDFC to select the VLAN ID from uh, its pool or you can specify your own VLAN ID. The last parameters to specify is the gateway for that network, the Anycast gateway that will be distributed later on all nodes of interest. Network experts can find additional parameters if needed under the Advanced tab. For this demo, you will keep the network deployment as simple as possible. Basically, the only crucial parameters you need to specify is the gateway. Done. Network web tenant one has been created. Repeat the same action for the second network app tenant one. The VRF already exists. Enter the VLAN ID. Enter the gateway for that network. Now the two networks for VRF tenant one have been created. You want to attach them to the different switches across the different data centers. Select the first network web and expand the window. Select the network attachment tab. Now it's really up to you. For this demo, you select first the border gateways because there is no endpoint attached to these nodes, hence no interface to configure. Consequently, you can do a quick attach for these border gateways. This action actually offers the extension of these two networks across the multi-site domain. Now, select the network names associated to uh, the different VXLAN VPN lift nodes that belongs to both Fabric 1 and Fabric 2 and edit. That triggers a new window used to attach each network to each leaf node or each uh, VPC pair as well as their concerned interfaces. To keep the demo easy to follow, Web network is always attached to the interfaces E1 slash 3 and the app network is always attached to the interfaces E1 slash 4, regardless of switch across any data center. You repeat this attachment for each switch on Fabric 1. Notice the attachment of the network to the port channels of the VPC pair leaf 115 and 116 toward the LAN classic. Then follow the same action for the Fabric 2. Finally, repeat the same attachment for the network app tenant 1. When done, you can select the networks and from the action drop down menu, do deploy. If you wish, you can preview the network configuration push to the leaf nodes. This configuration relies on the profile model, which is currently the default mode, but you can select CLI uh, if you prefer. When ready, you can deploy. It will take uh, a minute or so.
You can already check the uh, discovered endpoint by the different nodes here from the border gateway spine. You can run the command show l to route mac ip all to get all endpoint learned by this leaf node. Endpoint from both networks appear here. And uh, all endpoints have been discovered via BGP VPN as there is no local attached host to these border gateways. You can see uh, two endpoints have been learned from the remote site with the next hop being 10.100. something. Now let's have a look at the overlay network connectivity with the endpoint web 100. First successful ping to its gateway, the distributed Enicas gateway, the DAG. Next layer two ping destined to the web 119 in the remote site Fabric 2. And now a layer three ping destined to app 120 in the remote site Fabric 2. All looks good from a VXLAN VPN multi-site point of view. So now let's do the same for the LAN classic. From the LAN Classic, open the detail view. Currently only the default VRF exists, but no network. Create a new network web with the same VLAN ID 2100 and the same default gateway already given for the VXLAN EVPN fabric. The difference is now being the active and standby IP interfaces used by the FHRP protocol. And from the advanced tab, you can see um, HSRP being the default protocol, but uh, you can use VRP uh, if you prefer. Repeat the same action for the network app. And now the next step is to attach the networks. The attachment is very similar to VXLAN EVPN. Double click on one network to directly access the attachment menu. Notice that only the aggregation switches appear. Select the network web for both aggregation devices and call the edit action. Attach the network and select the aggregation switch that will be the FHRP active node for that network. As you can see, all interfaces for all access devices appear here. Check the interfaces of interest, the port channel connecting toward Fabric 1 and the interface E1 slash 3 for the web servers. And repeat the same action for the network app. Edit uh, the network attachment, enable attach, select the active uh, FHRP. You can use a different aggregation switch like here. Check the port channels connecting to the VXLAN VPN fabric for that network. And check the interfaces E1 slash 4 for that network. You can now select the two networks, open the action drop-down menu and select deploy. You can preview uh, for one aggregation device as you can see, NDFC will automatically populate the existing VPC interfaces that connect uh, all the access switches and the SVI configuration for HSRP. You can also preview one access switch and see the attachment of the network to each interface. Now you can deploy the network configurations. From the topology view, you can look at the network icon and you will see the two networks, web and app, in green. The green means that they have been attached somewhere. To view the attachment details, you can select, for example, the web network. And green means that the devices have been populated with that specific network. Return to the global topology view. And let's check the network reachability uh, between endpoint from LAN Classic and endpoint from the VXLAN EVPN fabrics. So now check that the web 
26 can ping its default gateway, the SGI created on the aggregation layer. Then check the layer 2 network connectivity from the LAN Classic to Fabric 1. OK. Check the layer 3 network connectivity from the LAN Classic to Fabric 1. OK. Check the layer 3 network connectivity from the LAN Classic to Fabric 2. Check the layer 2 network connectivity from the LAN Classic to Fabric 2. OK as well. In summary, NDFC can help you to configure the networks and VRF in just a few clicks for VXN VPN, multi-site, and now LAN Classic.